In the early 2000s, music lovers all around the world had a problem. They had a vast collection of various CDs and MP3s, but these were scattered across their shelves and devices. As you can imagine, managing and discovering music was becoming increasingly complicated and stressful. By 2006, two Swedish computer science grads, Daniel Ek and Martin Lorentzen, had a light bulb moment. They envisioned a platform that would give people easy access to an enormous library of music, all in one place. And by 2008, Spotify was born. The app gained traction amongst predominantly younger users, who jumped at the opportunity to listen to all their favorite artists in a single interface. Yet, this access to millions of songs in one place wasn't even the real genius of the application. The real genius of Spotify was its recommendation algorithm. Spotify was a place not only to listen to artists you already knew and loved, but you would get recommended songs based on the songs you liked. This single move was the game changer that made the platform unique and ahead of its time. However, just like any other business, Spotify had one problem, monetization. Even though Spotify had a large user base, they couldn't translate that into a meaningful profit. Hence, the company struggled to make profits. Right up to date, Spotify has been losing money for years, and they simply haven't figured out how to make it to profitability. So, in this video, we're going to examine why, despite Spotify's success, they keep losing millions of dollars year in, year out. We'd appreciate it if you took a second to hit the like button on this video, and also, subscribe as it enables more people to view our content. Spotify's dedication to compensating artists and record companies through royalties is one of its defining features. This revenue-sharing arrangement ensures that the music creators, who are the platform's heart and soul, receive their fair portion of proceeds. In fact, Spotify's royalty payout is one of its largest expenses, demonstrating the company's commitment to helping the music business. This strategy not only supports a diverse range of musicians, but it also develops goodwill throughout the music community. While Spotify's emphasis on artist pay is great, it has also complicated the company's route to profitability. Spotify's profit margin keeps on shrinking as more revenue is allocated to royalties. As a result, the company has been under some degree of financial stress and has been looking for methods to find a compromise between fairly rewarding artists and maintaining its own sustainability. This balancing act has sparked discussions inside the music industry and among investors about the company's long-term viability. Another issue is Spotify's marketing and advertising investments, which are critical to its growth strategy. Attracting and maintaining consumers is critical in a highly competitive music streaming sector, and marketing plays a critical part in accomplishing this goal. The company's marketing initiatives include digital advertising, collaborations with influencers and artists, and even promotional programs that provide free trials to potential members. These projects are intended to raise brand recognition, highlight Spotify's distinctive features, and attract customers to join up for premium memberships. This is great, but from a business perspective, Spotify's large marketing and advertising budget has proven to be a double-edged sword. While it is necessary for user acquisition and brand development, it can have a substantial impact on the company's profitability. Marketing costs can be significant, especially in competitive regions, and these spending have a direct impact on Spotify's bottom line. This dynamic has resulted in a difficult balancing act for the company, as it seeks to determine the appropriate level of marketing investment that would promote user growth while maintaining financial sustainability. Spotify's strategic investments in new products and services, such as podcasts and audiobooks, are critical to the company's continued expansion and competitiveness in the ever-changing streaming landscape. Recognizing the need to broaden its offerings beyond music, Spotify has expanded into spoken word entertainment. This growth is consistent with the company's larger goal of being the go-to platform for all types of audio entertainment. These expenditures, however, come at a cost, as Spotify must devote large resources to content acquisition, production, and development. Podcasts, in particular, have emerged as a key emphasis for Spotify. The corporation has invested millions of dollars acquiring podcasting networks and exclusive podcast material. 
luring both established and rising creators to the platform. While these expenditures improve Spotify's content library and user experience, they also add to the company's expanding expenses, reducing profitability. The competitive nature of the podcasting business emphasizes the importance of these efforts, as they allow Spotify to separate itself from competitors and maintain its position as an industry leader in audio streaming. Audiobooks represent yet another path for Spotify's growth. Spotify is profiting on the increased demand for audiobooks by entering this market and broadening its services to appeal to a broader audience. Audiobook content development and acquisition, like podcasting, necessitate large financial investments. Nonetheless, these initiatives are consistent with Spotify's long-term goal of being a one-stop destination for all audio material, ensuring that the company remains competitive and appealing to a wide spectrum of customers. In essence, Spotify's investments in new goods and services are critical to the company's efforts to adapt and grow in a rapidly changing media world. All of these are key to keep people on the platform, but are highly unprofitable at the moment. Spotify's attempt to bridge the cost gap have all resulted in layoffs, office closures, and other cost-cutting methods have been implemented as part of these restructuring initiatives. With the purpose of optimizing the company's resources and aligning its staff with its strategic goals. While these moves are meant to position Spotify for long-term viability, they do have some short-term financial consequences. The recurrence of restructuring expenditures is one of the immediate results of these restructuring activities. Severance packages for employees affected by layoffs, charges linked to closing or combining offices, and other costs associated with rearranging the company's structure and operations are all included in these costs. These expenses might be substantial and contribute to the company's losses during the restructuring period. Spotify, on the other hand, sees these expenses as investments in the company's future financial health, as they are meant to help the company operate more efficiently and effectively in the long run. One more thing Spotify has to deal with in order to become profitable is the emergence of ad-supported streaming alternatives, which have put Spotify's paid subscription business model under serious strain. Platforms such as YouTube Music and Pandora have used advertising money to provide free music streaming tempting consumers who are hesitant to pay for a subscription. This strategy targets a sizable market group of price-conscious consumers who may be unwilling to commit to a monthly pay for music access. Spotify's ability to convert people into paying subscribers has surely been hampered by the availability of free music through these services. The battle for ad-supported streaming services has heated up. Companies like YouTube have large user bases and advertising networks allowing them to provide a diverse range of material, including music, while effectively monetizing it through commercials. Because of this competition, Spotify is under tremendous pressure to consistently improve its user experience and content offerings in order to retain its subscriber base and attract new paying consumers. The growth of the music streaming business has undoubtedly resulted in increasing rivalry and price pressure posing challenges to Spotify's profitability. Amazon Music and Apple Music, both tech giants with huge resources and existing user bases, have entered the music streaming sector with the goal of capturing a sizable market share. This competitive environment has resulted in a scramble to offer competitive prices and distinctive features to attract consumers, bringing down the industry's average revenue per user. In such a climate, Spotify confronts the problem of maintaining its market position while keeping competitive prices. While the growth of the music streaming market presents challenges, it also offers opportunities for Spotify. The market's expansion reflects the rising global demand for streaming music services, indicating that there is still substantial room for growth. To address the increased competition, Spotify has focused on differentiating itself by offering a variety of plans, including family and student packages, bundling with other services like Hulu, and investing heavily in exclusive content and personalized playlists. These strategies aim to enhance user loyalty and encourage subscribers to stay with Spotify despite the growing number of alternatives. It's very clear that Spotify's entire business model is quite similar to Amazon's business model, which was to burn through their capital to gain market share. 
This tactic worked for Amazon, but who's to say Spotify will follow the same direction? It's all speculative, but it's crazy to bet against Spotify. There's a good chance that Spotify will survive the battle for market share and eventually become profitable. Thanks for watching.